In today's video, we're going to be learning how to take Perplexity AI's API and connect it to a no-code solution like Zapier. We'll learn how to start using the API key and begin leveraging it within Zapier's user interface and within all of our automation flows. Furthermore, this video is going to give you context of how to leverage this API in any context, whether you're developing software or integrating the API. Let's jump into today's video. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, let's learn how to start leveraging Perplexity AI's API. I received a comment asking me to do this, so we're doing this. If you watch my videos, go ahead and leave a comment for any type of topic when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'll make sure I get to it and try to make a video on it. Let's jump in. To start off here, we're just gonna go to our settings. Click that right there. Once we're in our settings, we're gonna go to API. And all you need to do from here is simply create a key. So you're gonna hit generate. I've already generated my API key, so I don't need to generate another one. And no, don't try to use that one. That's gonna be deleted by the end of this video. So you can actually, no, go ahead. Go ahead and try that and see what happens, but it won't work. Furthermore, while using Perplexity AI's API, we actually get $5 of free credit to start off. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this. By the end of this video, you're gonna learn how to leverage this as a webhook. I'm gonna explain why we're using webhook and I'm also gonna include the code in the comment down below. So make sure you leave a like. While using Perplexity's API, we currently have the ability to access one of their endpoints called chat completion. This is kind of like having a conversation with Perplexity, but we're accessing it through API now, which definitely makes sense. <laughs> Think of this as chat completion for Gemini, chat completion for OpenAI. This is specific to Perplexity AI though. And yes, I'm saying AI a lot. AI, 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 oh. So this is how you send data in the context of their API. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to do it within Zapier's UI. We have a couple of options that we need to make sure we fill out within the payload. Payload in this context is the data we're sending to this endpoint. First, go ahead and choose the model you want to use in the context of this payload. There's a ton of different models to choose from. We're going to use Llama today. Furthermore, we're going to identify the system instructions and the user instructions. Think of the system instructions as like, this is how you operate. This is your context. So a very simple one is your output should be precise and concise. And then the user content is the request. How many stars are there in the galaxy? How long is the United States of America in miles? Stuff like that. Now, if you want to see a full video on how to AI prompt engineer, no matter the model, check out that video right there. It goes in depth with the correct ways of approaching the system instructions and the correct ways of approaching the user instructions. Now that we have an idea of how to approach this endpoint, let's do it. Let's go ahead and create a new Zapier. Everything I'm about to show you right now can be applied to other automation platforms such as Make and Pipe Dream. This is just specifically how we're gonna do it within Zapier's UI. On top of that, the webhook itself can be applied to any type of software you're developing. So in order just to show you that it works and how to work it, we're just gonna add a dummy trigger here called a scheduler just so we can get access to the action and the webhook itself. So I'm just gonna set up some dummy variables here. This isn't relevant. This is basically whatever launches off your automation, that's when that becomes relevant. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and test this trigger. Perfect, now let's get to the fun part, the webhook. So why are we using a webhook, Corbin? Because right now it doesn't integrate within Zapier's ecosystem flawlessly where we provide an API key and then we can always reference it. So in order to reference the complexity API in Zapier as of now is through webhooks. It's kind of the whole point of this platform as if they didn't integrate with the platform, we would need to reference all of these apps with, with the API key every single time, but they make it easy if it integrates flawlessly with the platform. So for right now, it doesn't, so we're gonna have to do a webhook. We choose webhook by Zapier here. We're gonna do an event of custom request. Most of the times you're doing webhooks within Zapier, you're gonna choose custom re request because of the effect that your payloads are gonna be pretty big most of the time. Let's go to actions here. And this is where we're gonna fill in all the relevant information. I'll leave the payload in the comment down below. Let's go fill out everything else. Let's walk you through step-by-step step what my line of thinking is so it's easier for you to do future API endpoints no matter the context. Right off the bat, we have a couple options here. First, we gotta fill out the method. Now, there is a ton of different methods to choose from. In today's video though, we're just gonna do a post. The reason we're doing post, and this is gonna be us sending a payload, is because of the fact that if you look in their API documentation, it's requesting post. One thing down. Now, we have to actually tell it where to push this data. Where are we sending the data? And that's gonna be the endpoint here, which it provides as well. We're gonna copy, come over here and paste. Two things down. Now we get to the data itself. So a lot of times the data, you don't need to provide all this craziness here. You typically only need to provide very, very specific points like this part here, and then also authorization tokens. To make our lives easy, let's go ahead and just grab the example data here. I'm gonna go ahead and simply grab this and hit copy. It's always a great idea to start with example data just to see if like it's even connected and it works. I'm gonna paste. Once we have pasted it here, simply add whatever information you care about. So if you wanna choose a different model, choose a different model. So maybe we don't want 32K online. Maybe we want 
70 B instruct choose for the system. We can change it here. We can put anything here, make sure it stays within the quotation marks. That's important. And then obviously we can change the underlying message. Now, if you're familiar with Zapier and you know how it works, that means that we can take previous inputs and use it as data inputs here or previous outputs and use it as data out outputs inputs here. If I can speak, if you really want to get familiar with Zapier and all of its capabilities, I'll go ahead and leave a playlist right here. It's over like 80 videos long of everything you do with AI and automation, super in-depth stuff. Let's keep going here. That is our payload. Now we got our payload. We're going to go ahead and add some headers. The first relevant header you're going to add is the content type. This is going to tell basically the endpoint, how the data is being structured and received. So for us, it's just going to be application JSON because this is JSON. Now the last part, which is probably the most important part is our key. What gives us the ability to access this endpoint and actually receive an output to do so for this context or this type of API endpoint, we're going to use authorization. This is where your API key comes into play. This is how it knows to charge you. This is how it identifies you when ask, accessing it for messages. So simply copy this or hit that little copy button. You're going to paste it in here, but we're going to add one other thing when it comes to this kind of authorization. It's a bear authorization. No, not a bear. It doesn't want to eat your honey. <laughs> we're going to add the bear here at a space. And we're good to go. Now we have the key to access this endpoint. If I hit continue here, based off this message, how many stars are in the galaxy, we should see an output here. Test and step. There we go. We got the amount of tokens used and we got our answer. There are approximately between 100 and 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. That covers how we connect Perplexity's API and Zapier. You can use that same type of logic to connect it to your software, build out webhooks that way. That goes everything we need to know in today's video. So make sure you leave a like, it's completely free. Check out that AI prompt engineering video if you actually wanna know how to leverage the system instructions and the user instructions in any context. And I'll see you in the next video. These are two random videos based off your choosing. It could be good, it could be bad. It's all based off your clicks and YouTube's algo. That's my face and I'll see you in the next video.